It was the announcement millions of Egyptians have been waiting for, but it never happened. Yesterday, the crowds in Cairo's streets widely believed President Hosni Mubarak would step down, but when the 82-year-old president went on television, he said he would remain in office until September. He'll transfer at least some of his power to Vice President Omar Suleiman. The announcement, though, shocked and outraged the protesters. In a sign of impatience, President Obama released a statement last night reading in part, the Egyptian government must put forward a credible, concrete and unequivocal path toward genuine democracy and they have not yet seized that opportunity. So for more, we are joined by CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst Pamela Falk. Pamela, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Let's talk about the Obama administration first and foremost in all of this. We were seeing statements, you know, every other day or, or whatnot, but right. is it the place of the U.S. government to continue putting the pressure or should the, the U.S. government really pretty much let Egypt do what Egypt needs to do? Well, I think at this point it's wise to support the pro-democracy movement because there's been a lot of back and forth, keep up, stay with an ally or support the pro-democracy movement, don't humiliate President Mubarak in making him leave. But the idea that the U.S. CIA director this morning, Leon Panetta, said that there was a likelihood of a of a resignation uh, p brings the United States in and so the United States uh, and President Obama have to respond to the fact that either they were told the wrong information or they're seeing the moment that needs to come and so uh, the the Obama administration probably does need to say what it has said now because I think we're in a countdown moment we're in a moment in which the question is not if he leaves but when and a lot of people expected him to say today that he would leave immediately right. but what we heard is that he's not but he is also though this is something that we found out he's going to transfer some of that power that he had to Vice right. President Omar Suleiman now is that something that's going to make much much of a difference no not not at this point. That was a plan A speech. In other words, he came to a crowd that was looking to hear this resignation, and what he did was say, first of all, all this constitutional stuff, it sounded very opaque, and then came out with, he's not leaving. And the crowd swelled when they thought this was a moment of history, when they heard from the United States that it was likely that he would resign. And now he comes to the to the audience and says, the United States will not push us around, that they, he will not yield to this pressure, that we are all Egyptians. And if he weren't so uh, cruel and, the, and his regime so corrupt, it would have been a sad moment. He looked weak. Mm. And part of the issue is there's a true civil disobedience in the crowd. They do not, they're not looking for violence. What will happen next when there's strikes, there was a sit-in at the Suez Canal, all of the protests have, have grown. And so it's the moment that he has to make more change evident. Well, the world is watching indeed. And, you know, Facebook, Twitter, these social media sites, they are all weighing in as well. So I want to take you to my Twitter site because we've got a really good question from Ryan Donnell, and he posted this saying, how does Mubarak benefit by staying in office longer? I think a lot of people are wondering that. If he says he's going to step down anyways in September and not run for, you know, re-election, right. why not leave now? Well, part of the feeling is that he wants to stay in the country. He doesn't want to be like Tunisia's president or the Shah, where they have to get on a plane and leave the country. And so he may very well. A lot of this is under the surface. What we have seen is only the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But he may be negotiating his exit. He also, if you can believe what he says, he, he believes that there's a power vacuum. This is somewhat of a leaderless opposition. There's the Muslim Brotherhood, there are the political parties, there's al Baradé, there's Amir Musa, who's the Arab League, and then, of course, there's what started it, which is the youth movement. So he believes it's a vacuum. He believes it has to be a slower transition. But reality is that he uh, may be trying to make sure his group stays in. I'm going to take you back to El Baradé because you mentioned him. He has said that the military must intervene. Right. Why haven't we seen much from the military in, in sense of taking a side here? Well, they were instructed not to take a side. And in fact, in that those moments of violence when the pro Mubarak groups came out, they sat on their hands. And uh, some people feel that that was so that 
the military could come in because what it uh, and justifiably come in because it would show that there was more violence but there hasn't been violence and the Egyptian military is very well respected they've been running the country uh, you've seen a lot of the chief of staff Anan you've seen a lot of the different people the president has not been in the meetings of the Supreme Military Council in the last few days that is because they are really running the country and they may have to come in if he doesn't get out and the crowds continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Got another viewer question for you. This Absolutely. one from my Facebook page. AJ Riley asks, what is the likelihood that Egypt could become another Iran or worse? Well, in any power vacuum, something uh, dangerous can come in, but it is unlikely, in my view, that a, uh, a radical Islamic state would come in after even in a power vacuum because uh, this is basically a very secular young group that started this. It was a Facebook group, the April 6th movement. Uh, most 60 percent of the population is under 30. It's motivated by both political need for democracy and econ economics. They want jobs. They want less of the money to only go to the rich and stop the corruption. So they, I don't think that's what's really motivating it. Now, in a vacuum and with Mubarak not stepping down and trying to rally, let's all get together, who knows what kind of deals could be made, but I doubt it. All right. CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst Pamela Falk, as always, we do appreciate your insight. Thank you. My pleasure.